Confessions of Victory is our reading for the day. If those having trouble finding it, it's about five pages from the end of the book. So it's about five pages from the end. Confessions of Victory. I want to recommend, as before we read this, I want to recommend that as we deal with all the chaos in life, I want to recommend that you read this one every day along with the daily hedge of protection to understand that victory is already ours but sometimes we have to remind ourselves that victory is ours so i encourage you to read this one along with the daily hedge of protection every single day especially on days you feel challenged by something in the world amen let's begin in the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror, even in darkness. Right now, I prepare my way with the anointed word of God. I have been honored with a right to execute judgment written in Jesus' name. When I speak God's word, even in the midst of darkness, I shall have light, victory all the time. That's mine in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. I overcome the world with victory Jesus has obtained. I maintain the victory Jesus has obtained. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now that my God always causes me to have the decisive, settled victory in everything through the anointing. And I always have victory over my enemies because God shows favor to me. In the name of Jesus, I will change my focus from the world to the word and expect a miracle. I expect a miracle every day. God always causes me to have victory every day. Miracles are available every day. Therefore, I expect a miracle every day. In the name of Jesus, I am an overcomer. I have been born of God. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. In the name of Jesus, my part of the fellowship of his love is the key to victory that Jesus obtained. In the name of Jesus, offenses will never hurt me. I declare I am not self-assured. I am God-assured. In the name of Jesus, my victory comes by refusing to judge by what my eyes see and what my ears hear. But my victory comes by trusting what God has promised me. In the name of Jesus, I declare I have victory all the time. In the name of Jesus, I am a son of God. And I declare right now that the battle will soon become a meal. It will become an experience that will nourish and build me up spiritually. In the name of Jesus, I declare breakthrough, come forth. I command you, let the redeemed of the Lord come forth. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I maintain that victory. Thank you, Father. I am triumphant over the enemy. I am an overcomer. I am a victor in the anointed Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I don't have because I don't expect but now i expect not every now and then but every day every day i expect a miracle every day i expect a favor from god every day i expect triumph victory and success it's been made available i have an expected end and it shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus, miracles are available. Increase is available. Healing is available. And joy is available. In the name of Jesus, I expect what has been made available to me by the anointed Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare I have victory all the time. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Victory all the time. That's mine. Say it together. Victory all the time. That's mine. In Jesus' name. One more time. Victory all the time. That's mine. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, family. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Victory is ours. Like the old the old song. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Remember that song? The old the old standard. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. That's a song the, the, the old old song back in the day. I used to hear that when I was a little boy. They sang that song almost every Sunday. <laughs> Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Today is mine. So we got to sing that song as well in your, in your heart whenever you're going through something. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We got a great lesson today. Great lesson today. A great lesson today. <laughs> the temptation. The temptation to be judgmental. The temptation to be judgmental. Now, this is a great lesson because this is a major challenge for Christians. <laughs> that this is a major challenge for Christians to not be judgmental. Because we see, we, we, we follow the world, we follow the will of God. The reason it's hard and it's a temptation is because as we do our best to follow the will of God, and we see others who don't live that way, others who completely live completely in sin we have the urge we have the urge to tell them something now how we tell them this is very careful this is a fine point is how you is how you approach someone is whether is it sincere or is it judgmental is it sincere or is it judgmental and the way to, the way to check yourself now i have to say this the way to check yourself is when you see somebody living in sin when you see someone living in sin and you want to approach them, if you feel like you come up, the, 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 the worst thing to say, the, the judgmental way to say what you need to be doing, what you need to be doing. Now, first of all, as soon as you say what you need to be doing, you ju you're judgmental. You're being judgmental. What you need to be doing is live right. You need to be living right. You need to be living right. So what you're doing, you're attacking them. And when you attack them, that is a judgmental tone. Yes, we know they're sinning, but we don't attack them. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. No, let me, uh, I, I know, you know what? Uh, approach with what? Approach with what? Humility. Approach with humility. You know what? Um, you know what? Especially, especially if the person you're talking to is a Christian living in sin. See, let me first, let me break this down first. Let's first talk about people who are Christians living in sin versus people in sin because in either way either way for us either way for us we still approach with humility now if a person if a person is a, is a Christian and they're having trouble with sin you approach with a testimony you know what uh, you know what I remember I remember when I uh, first got saved I had so much I had a big struggle because I had so much stuff I had to change in my life. And so what I'm doing, I'm sharing my testimony with a Christian who, who is still battling the, the, the transition from a life of sin. They got saved, but they're still battling with sin. Because remember, we remember, we, we remember when you get saved, I said it last week, it doesn't happen quickly. Those, those things in your life you were addicted to, it takes time to transition and get that stuff out of you. So when you first get saved, there may be a battle going on. So when we come across Christians who are still battling sin, we got to share with them. You know, I, I remember the only the only thing that helped me, the only thing that helped me was, was really just staying in the Word of God. Amen, John. Salvation is a journey. We keep working. We are works in progress. Point to yourself. I am a work in progress. Even if you've been saved for years, I am a work in progress. There is something, always something new to learn in the Word. There is always something new to learn 
in the word. So even if it's been, even if it's been saved for years, we are still works in progress. But when we approach someone who's new, or even as someone, I, I know people who've been saved for years and they still battle sin. So this, there's no time limit. There's no time limit. A person can be saved for years and still be struggling. Because it, it, it depends on if they really attack that thing with the word of God. Let me say it again. We all know there's something in our, our own personalities. Each one of us has something in our personality that is a battle we face. Now, in order to be victorious, in order to be victorious, we must attack, we must attack whatever it is directly with the word of God. So if you if you attack an addiction, a bad habit, you actually call it out spirit. Let's, let's use procrastination. Let's use procrastination. Spirit of press, Father, in the name of Jesus, I call out the spirit of procrastination, and I, I I rebuke it, I bind it, and I cast procrastination out of my life right now, in the name of Jesus. Now I just called out procrastination because I know I I battle with procrastination. So if you battle with something, call it by name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call out that whatever it is, that weakness I'm battling. Call it by name. I rebuke it. I bind it. I cast it out. Now, this is this is for us, what we do ourselves. Now, I'm giving you an example because this is how, if a person doesn't do this, you can be saved for years and still be battling with that particular thing because you didn't confront it. If you don't confront a sin that's hidden, if you don't confront it, it festers, it tries to get stronger. And if you, as soon as you disconnect, it'll come right back. And the way to keep it under your foot is to recognize it, you still struggle with it, call it out in the name of Jesus, bind it, rebuke it, bind it, and cast that thing out of your spirit, out of your mind, out of your life, back to the pit of hell, for which you came. Now, this, I'm giving an example first of how we can control things we must get control. How to control the things we must get control over is to confront it. Now, so we come, we come to someone who's still struggling. Now, we've, we've, did, we've learned how to be victorious. Now, even if we've learned to be victorious, when you approach someone, approach them with your testimony don't approach them attacking them see it, 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 the, the the temptation is you see they're living horribly in sin a christian you see a christian living horribly in sin and the first thing you want to do is say look what don't you don't you read the bible what are you doing boy don't you read the bible <laughs> you want to attack them you're so frustrated they're not even they got saved and they're nowhere near the word of God, they still love the world. But we can't attack that. We can't attack someone who got saved and still loves the world. That is a transition. So we approach them, we approach them with humility and share our testimony. You know, you know, you know, you know, brother, it's not easy, brother. I mean, brother, what you have to do, you have to just stay in prayer. You might have to fast and pray. You might, they might ask you, well, how do you do it? They may ask you, well, how did you do it? What did you do to get sin under control? And you share your testimony. But if you don't approach with humility, they'll never ask you, how'd you do it? Because if you attack them with judgmental, if you are judgmental and attack them, they'll shut you off and don't even care. Don't even care you delivered because they feel attacked. And when they feel attacked, they shut down. And now you lost them. No one wants to be attacked. So we approach people with humility. Even if we hate what they're doing, we have to always pray for people. Some people, all you can do is pray. Some people, all you can do is pray. They don't receive, they don't receive your word. They don't receive the word of God. They refuse to walk. Now, now, now we're getting to people, now we're getting to people who are in the world. Even though there's some people who are Christians who we call lukewarm Christians. They, they got saved and they want to be saved and the world at the same time. You can't have both. 
Either you're with the devil or you're with Jesus. There is no middle ground. So a lukewarm Christian is one who wants to go to church on Sunday and sin from Monday to Saturday and they go back to church on Sunday thinking they erase the sin of Monday to Saturday and they go back to sin the next Monday. That's not Christian. A Christian is following Christ. Living the word, doing the word every day. Not just every Sunday and then run back to sin. No, if you love God, we hate sin in us, in anybody else. So our our approach, our approach is everything. Our approach is everything. Because we understand, we understand because we, we've been delivered and we have to keep working to keep deliverance, that thing under our feet. We never kill the old man. We never kill the old man. Old things passed away. The old man is not dead. The old man is under our foot, under control by the spirit man. And as soon as you stop praying and you disconnect, all of a sudden, the old man, the old you, comes back to life as if he never left. And then you go back into backsliding. And all of a sudden, you're back into where you were years ago because you disconnected. And the spirit man got weak and the flesh got stronger. This is why we must pray every day to keep the spirit strong enough to keep the flesh under control. Otherwise, we feed the flesh. We don't want to feed the flesh. We feed the spirit and starve the flesh. Don't feed the flesh and starve the spirit. The wrong order. Feed the spirit and starve the flesh in order to keep things under control. Now, there are two ways, two different ways or reasons why people are judgmental. Two different ways. Now, we're focusing mainly on the people of, of, of the temptation, but I, w I want to mention the other one. I want to get this other one out of the way. Some people are judgmental because of pride. They get saved. They get saved and say, look at me. I'm saved. Now, I'm, I'm too good for everybody. They are high and mighty. That is not humility. Excuse me. That is not Humility, but some people get saved and they act like they just saw it. <laughs> They act like they went up to Mount Sinai and just came down from talking like Moses came down and now they're high and mighty Well, you know what you you you, you still walking in sin. I'm saved. I'm saved now. I don't sin anymore. Excuse me. First of all, you're a liar Everybody sinned But some people and the word says it if you think you don't sin you're a liar the word says it the flesh Love sin is a constant battle. But someone who is high and mighty will try to make you think, well, I'm saved now. I don't I don't sin. I don't ever sin because I'm saved now. You better get yourself straight. Now, as soon as you say, you better get yourself straight, judgmental, hello, judgmental, you need to get yourself straight. What about you? Well, uh, a, the word says, all, the word says, all have sinned. All have sinned. All have sinned. First of all, that's what the word says. So as soon as someone tries to act like, as soon as someone tries to act like they have no sin, they're walking in a false pretense because it's a battle in the flesh that everyone challenged. Everyone is challenged by the battle in the flesh because the flesh lives in the world and the flesh loves sin. So even if we're saved for years, we must keep we must keep the flesh under control. As soon as we get lazy, the next thing you know, all of a sudden, the flesh rises up, and that's why. Amen. Now look look at the, my text, Matthew seven, Matthew chapter seven, one through five. Matthew chapter seven, one through five. My my first text. I have two texts, two different texts for a day. Get this window down a little bit. Man. Matthew chapter 7, 1 through 5. It reads, Judge not, judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you and why do you look at a speck 
in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank in your own eye well how can you say to your brother let me remove that speck from your eye and look a plank is in your own eye hypocrite first remove the plant from your own eye and then you'll be able to clearly remove a speck from your brother's eye when, see, th this is the first example this is the first perfect example if you got something if you got something hey loggy doggy if you got something in your life that you battle with we are the last person to attack somebody how they should live if we're not if we're not perfect if we're not perfect how dare us attack somebody else for what they're doing and, and what the scripture saying how can you attack somebody else when you got this, a problem in your own life when you have a problem in your own life don't attack somebody else in their problem deal with your own problem first deal with your own problem first and then you can minister to someone else but a judgmental person though a judgmental person attacks somebody and they haven't haven't even dealt with their own struggle and sometimes sometimes people get judgmental to hide their own battle Woo! let me say it again some people get judgmental in order to hide their own problem fix yourself first before you can fix someone else and that, that's what this scripture is talking about like like that, that's why it says it in verse that's why verse <laughs> verse uh, verse 5 Re first remove the plank from your own eye and then you'll be able to clearly remove the speck from your brother's eye deal with yourself first deal with you first and then help somebody else don't attack someone else first and you have to deal with your own self reverse that deal with you first get yourself together and then help someone else in the struggle but see that's why it's so important to be aware that's why this lesson is to self-check a self-check if you ever find yourself being judgmental the, the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will reveal to you uh, excuse me look in the mirror if you get judgmental I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will tell you to look in the mirror and guess what you see the same thing oh why are you attacking them look in the mirror and look at what you're doing how can you attack them and look at what you're doing self-check is a wake-up call for each one of us I remember I, <laughs> I remember when I used to do a personal I, mean, I used to be a personal trainer fitness trainer and I, I remember I remember so clearly this one guy I was training uh, I was a personal trainer I I, I charged him he gave me a bad check now this this client I had he he wrote a bad check gave me a bad check and then disappeared I was upset I'm training the guy for a month he gives me a check for the month and it's a bad check and then not only did he cancel he disappeared now I'm upset I'm saying wait a minute this guy I thought I knew this guy I thought I knew this guy so I said okay well, give me a check instead of cash you can write a check he writes a check and disappears and it's a bad check so two things it's a bad check and he disappeared so now I'm really upset <laughs> Yeah. Now a year goes by I haven't seen him I haven't found him anywhere and then all of a sudden all of a sudden I see him in church <laughs> Ooh, shame the devil tell the truth I see him in church now now the guy I've been looking for for two years who wrote me a bad check all of a sudden I see him in my church he praising God and he he has a nerve to say hey Fitz how you doing and he walks off as if nothing ever happened as if nothing ever happened I'm boiling I'm, I'm like I got I see I let you know right now I was a new Christian uh, let me know I was a new Christian I had steam coming out my ears this guy is saying how you how you doing Fitz he disappeared for two years gave me a bad check and he has a nerve say hey Fitz how you doing and walks off how am I doing I want to knock you out how am I doing yeah. I almost I, like my friend says I almost took my robe off I almost took my robe off and went back to the street how am I doing 
Where's my money? Where's my money? He never paid me. Now, 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 let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This is what the Holy Spirit did. This is what the Holy Spirit did. The more every Sunday I saw this guy, every Sunday I saw this guy, I got more and more upset that he has the nerve to greet me every Sunday, smile on my face, don't even mention, don't even mention the money. Don't even mention it. So now I'm getting confused. I'm saying, is it, has God got amnesia? Is he, is, has he lost his mind? What is this guy? Don't, he knows me. So why isn't he mentioning the money? So what happens is, long story short, the more upset I got, the more upset I got. There's one day I almost lost it. And this is what the Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit knew I was about to lose it. So as about, I had this rage. I'm, almost, I'm in church now. Look, at, I'm in the house of God. Look at this guy in rage. Now this guy stole my peace completely. I'm in church. Look at this guy. And he said, had nerve to come to church. Speak to me, and they does their word. I'm in church boiling. Now the Holy Spirit said, look, hold up. Hold him up. Now this is what the Holy Spirit said. As I'm looking at the person boiling, the Holy Spirit says, do you mean to tell me that you don't owe anybody money? What'd you say, Holy Spirit? You mean to tell me that there's nobody that you owe money to? That you have not, that you have not paid back? Uh-oh, uh-oh, all of a sudden, just as the Holy Spirit said that, you mean to tell me there's no one that you owe money to that you hadn't paid back? And all of a sudden, I remembered somebody years ago, years ago, I never paid back. And all of a sudden, the rage went completely out of me. He says, how can you be upset with this guy about not paying you back and there's somebody you have not paid back and they never approached you. They never approached you. They never said, where's my money? They never said, how come you didn't pay me back? They never mentioned it. So here you are ready to beat this guy up for not paying you back and there's somebody you owe money to who never mentioned it never never called you i come i got convicted so bad i the, the rage completely left me i said oh lord oh lord i'm sorry lord you're right oh lord what am i doing what am i doing i got convicted right there see i i knew why it happened i'm in church and the holy spirit gave me a lesson in church <laughs> the holy spirit gave me a, a mini sermon in my pew he he taught me real quick how he taught me verse five he taught me verse five how can you be upset with somebody who didn't pay you back when you haven't paid anybody back how can you have the nerve to be mad at him and the person you owe money is not mad at you and that's verse that is verse five we just read it take care remove the plank from your own eye first and then and then help your brother See, this is, this is why I said the temptation to be judgmental. I'm judging the person who owed me money and calling him a freeloader. He didn't pay me back. Man, what kind of guy is that? Who didn't pay me back? He didn't pay me back. I'm calling him all kinds of names. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit convicts me. Oops. Oops. There it is. Oops. There it is. <laughs> you doing the same thing. So that's how the Holy Spirit gave me a checkmate. And somebody said earlier, that's how the Holy Spirit gave me a checkmate. Take care of, take care of what you need to do. And then, so then what I did, I went to the brother. I went to him and said, look, brother, now you're going to love this. You're going to love the closing here, the closing of this story. I go to the guy after I got convicted. After I got convicted, I went to the guy who owed me money. I said, look, brother, you know what? Uh, Look, brother, you know what? I, I know uh, it's been the years. I trained you a few years ago. You owe me a bad check. But look, you know what? I forgive you for not paying me back. I, and I, it, took, it took a lot. I had to take a deep breath. I might have been shaking. But I said, you know, brother, I forgive you for not paying me back. It's been a few years now. Don't worry about it. I forgive you. 
And what the brother said is, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus, brother. I can sleep now. I've been having nightmares. You came into my house and beat me up. <laughs> Once I said I forgive him, he said, he said, thank you, Jesus. I've been having nightmares. You came into my house and beat me up. He said he, said he had dreams about my thoughts. <laughs> I was dreaming about knocking him out. And he's, he's having nightmares. I came into his house and beat him up. And I'm thinking about wanting to beat him up. So he had nightmares about my thoughts. <laughs> and then we had a we had a good laugh. <laughs> we had a good laugh. But see what happened was what happened was we both felt better. We both felt better. By me forgiving him, by me forgiving him. I was able to let it go. And by me forgiving him, I, he, I let it go. And then he, him being glad I forgave him, he let the anxiety, He was. I had no idea. I had no idea he was going through that. I was so mad. I was so mad just to see him. I, I didn't even understand he was going through something too for not paying me back spiritually. So he, he, was, un, he was at unrest in the spirit for never paying me back. I, I didn't know that. I was too mad that he didn't pay me back. So the Holy Spirit dealt with both of us. The Holy Spirit gave me release. And gave him release. And now he can sleep at night. <laughs> now he goes he go to bed at night and sleep. And not dream me coming to his house. <laughs> but see. That's how. This is how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit works and solves things. But what, what happened? What had to happen first? What had to happen first. What happened first? What happened first? Verse 5. Remove the plank from your own eye first and then help somebody. And that happened with me. That story is about me. I had to remove, I had to remove my anger after the Holy Spirit showed me I owed somebody. I removed the anger in me by realizing I owed somebody else. And then I could approach him. I approach him and say, you know what? I forgive you, guy. I forgive you. And then I was able to let go. I was able to let go. See, when you don't, when you don't, when you don't forgive, we know this. We know this. I did a lesson on this. When you don't forgive, it hurts you more than them. Let me say it again. When you don't forgive, it hurts you more than them. Because when you don't forgive, when you don't forgive, it festers in you, not them. When you're upset and don't forgive someone, it festers in you, not them. So, <laughs> like, like, yeah. so, so in order to let it go, when you ask forgiveness, it helps you. And the word says, forgive or you will not be forgive or you will not be forgiven. The word says it in Matthew, forgive or you will not be forgiven. So as Christians, we must be obedient. Even if it makes you mad, we must forgive for ourselves because the word says it, forgive so that you will be forgiven. That's obedience. So that day I grew spiritually. That day I grew spiritually to understand God's got this. Forgive the guy. Forgive the guy. Don't even worry about why he didn't pay you. He was not a criminal. He's not a criminal. He comes to church every week. <laughs> he just I don't I didn't I didn't even ask him what happened. I just said, I forgive you. It wasn't see, it wasn't important. It wasn't even important two years later why he didn't pay me. Either he had he had no money and was too prideful to tell me he couldn't keep training. Because he ran out of money. He was too prideful to tell me he didn't have the money to hire me. But see, I didn't care about that. So it, it wasn't even important anymore. It was about forgiveness. About taking the plank out of my own eye. So I could help him. And we helped each other. My anger was gone. And his fear was gone. I was delivered from anger. And he was delivered from fear of my anger. <laughs> so we both got delivered. So this, this is what happened. Instead of judging him and calling him names, and when I removed the plank out of my own eye, I no longer judged him. As if I have never had hard times. 
We all have had hard times. In his case, he was too prideful to tell me he's going through something financially. And how many of us have done that? You go through something financially and you're too prideful to tell people, I, I, really, I can't let people know I don't have enough money. I can't tell people. So instead you act like you got enough money, but you don't have enough money. So he could have been doing that. He could have been doing that. But then I understand all of a sudden, I've had times where I don't have enough money, but he, he didn't want to tell me. He was too prideful to tell me he didn't have enough money. So instead, he wrote the check and hid. The thing to do, the thing to do is be honest. If you don't have enough money, if you don't have enough money, hey dude, look, I want, I wish I could continue. I wish I could continue. I just don't have, I don't have the money. Now, if he had said that to me, I might have been moved to say, you know, don't worry about it, brother. I'll give you a free month. Who knows what happened? If he had said it that day, I might have been, I might have still trained him because I understand hard times. But when you don't, when you don't, when you let pride come in, when you let pride come in, pride destroys everything. Pride goes before a fall. Amen. So we must understand we all have some. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, amen, Susan. Everybody's got something. So we must remember that in order to be cured from being judgmental, it's to remember everybody has sinned. Everyone has sinned in some way. So we can't judge anybody else. Even in today's lifetime, in today's times, we see so many types of living. In today's time, if you look at the world right now, we see so many kinds of sin. But even if we see all the sin around us, everyone is dealing with some kind of sin that we must control in ourselves and try to help others. So when you're judgmental, you are ignoring the fact that everyone has sinned. Matter of fact, the other text, turn to John, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. This is a time when when Jesus with with uh John chapter 8 let's see John chapter 8 uh 1 through 8 John chapter 8 verse 1 through 8 now we know this story we know this story I'll read it for you John chapter 8 verses 1 through 8 uh uh Deanne uh Dan I'll tell you which one Deanne only type uh Deanne only type verse 8 Deanne Verse 7, Deanne, only type verse 7. I'm going to read 1 through 8. Verse 1, but Jesus went to Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple. All the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught up in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? So this is what Jesus said. They said this Jesus tested him that they might have something of which to accuse him of. But Jesus stooped down. He stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So when they asked him again, he raised up and said, he who is without sin, let him pick up the first stone. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And the verse, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue verse 9. Verse 9, and those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus, Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing amidst. Now stop right there. Now actually, he told the woman to sin no more. You can go to verse 12. Read verse 12 on your own. Now, the point is, they were ready to stone the woman for adultery. They brought Jesus. They were, first of all, they were testing Jesus to see if they could find something against him. So they brought the woman to Jesus and say, well, what do you say? The, the, Moses, Moses, the law of Moses says, stone her. What do you say? And so Jesus said, let him without sin pick up the first stone. 
and everybody left because <laughs> everybody knew they had a sin and that's the world today we can't judge people we can't judge people no matter how much we hate what they're doing we must pray for them as christians we must pray for people not just judge them who are we who are we to judge and when you see the scriptures i'll give you i'll give you several scriptures uh under this video and there's several scriptures there's one scripture where the word says who are we to judge god is the only judge everybody's going to be judged on judgment day everybody is going to be judged on judgment day according to their own sins and how they live on this earth but we on earth don't judge each other we are not the judges god is the only judge and if we remember that god is the only judge it'll help us remember it'll help help us remember to just pray for people don't judge just pray it doesn't matter how much it angers you it doesn't matter what they're doing pray for them and pray to get a revelation pray the life that the, the light will turn them around out of the darkness they're living in darkness right now we hey now guess first of all we remember we used to be in darkness we used to be in darkness so if we come across someone who is still in darkness and we used to live in darkness we understand what that feels like we understand what darkness feels like we all came from darkness at one time in our life before we got saved so we understand the power of darkness so when you go to somebody let your understanding of what darkness felt like to you let it touch them hey indy buzz indy let let god let god's light in you of how god brought you out of darkness let your testimony touch them and how god saved you from darkness because they're still in darkness so instead of judging them give them a testimony give them some hope a prayer to let them know there is a way out of this darkness so when you when you talk to them and don't attack them they listen and when they listen you plant a seed and that seed could take root to lead them to deliverance judgmental attitudes will stop will stop your progress being judgmental will stop your progress because as soon as a person feels you're judging them they'll shut you off they'll shut you down they want to hear they won't want to hear another thing you're saying because someone feels judged is very defensive but someone feels your humility they'll listen and they'll talk and the more they talk the more they talk the more you reach them to be able to help them. Amen. The one other scripture, a turn to a Romans, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14, verse 10 and 13. Romans chapter 14, 10 and 13. Verse 10, Romans 14, 10 first. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. See, this is one way of remembering not to be judgmental. Come remembering, everybody is going to be judged on judgment day. So sometimes when you remember everybody's going to be judged, it'll help us remember not to judge. Like verse 10 says, the verse thir jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. So when, when you, that, that means when you help somebody, you keep them from falling. When you attack someone, they are defensive and they'll fall because you ran them away. 
and to further darkness. When you approach someone with humility, you can save them from falling because you're giving them your testimony of how to come out of the darkness. But when you make them defensive, they can run away from you and get even further into darkness and cause them to fall even further away because they ran from you because they felt they were being judged. That's the importance of it. Amen. And one last one. A James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Last scripture. James chapter 4. Uh, verse verse uh, 11 and 12 James chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 James chapter 4 verse verses 11 and 12 11 and 12 James 4 verses 11 and 12 do not speak evil of one another brethren he who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law but if you judge the law you are not a doer of the law but a judge verse 12 there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy who are we or who are you to judge another now of course you see a capital l there is one lawgiver one who is able to save and destroy. I wonder who that is. <laughs> the reason the lawgiver is in caps. We know what we're talking about. There's only one judge. Only one judge. One lawgiver who's able to save and destroy. There's only one person who can do that. So who are we to judge if the major judge on judgment day is the only judge? So I just gave you these scriptures and a few others I'll give under the video. The, the point being, the point being, the point being in order to keep, the order to keep the temptation of being judgmental. If you remember, if you remember, everybody has sinned. People tend to forget their own sin and then attack somebody else. But when you remember, for all have sinned, the word says it, for all have sinned and fallen short. Everybody, everybody came from darkness. The flesh came from darkness. And those of us, those of us who came into the light chose to come into the light. So if we, if we remember we used to be in darkness, it'll help us not judge somebody who is still in darkness. It's, it's a self-check. It is a self-check. It is a self-check. That's what I'm saying, you know. That is what I'm saying. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we understand that these, these, um, um, Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the lawmaker. <laughs> Amen. So there is one lawgiver. One lawgiver. That's, that's the lawmaker. <laughs> There's one lawgiver. That's right. Lawgiver. Only God gives the laws. Only God gives the laws. Not us. Not us. We don't give the laws. We don't give the laws. Only one lawgiver. Amen. Only one lawgiver. And he is the one who's able to save Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who can save and destroy. The only one, the only one who can save and destroy. And we remember that. We, if we remember that, if we remember that, that keeps us in check to not be tempted to be judgmental and be humble. Always remain humble. The key is always remain humble. That's the theme. That's the word. That is the key to humility is to remain humble when you push someone and that really helps them because then you really reach them. And the whole point, the whole point of approaching them 
is to reach them, not turn them away. We don't want to turn them away. We want them to receive. Receive us. Amen. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen, Nelly. Amen, Nelly. So that's the key, the lesson today. And I hope this was a blessing for us to keep these things. And it's always easy. It's always easy to make to do a self-check. Whenever you feel like, whenever you feel like you're you're slipping into being judgmental, do a self-check. I've caught I've caught that many times. I feel sometimes a temptation to correct somebody. And then I catch myself because I realize the way I'm about to approach them is the wrong way. Sometimes before you approach someone, do a self-check to make sure the way you're about to approach them is the correct way and, and correct it. It's okay. It's okay to catch yourself. The reason you do a self-check is to make sure you're not being judgmental. It's very important to do a self-check because if you are judgmental, you may lose them. You may lose someone if you are judgmental. So make sure we don't want to lose anybody. We want to help bring them in, out of the darkness. Our goal is to bring them out of the darkness, not push them further into the darkness. Some people feel, so I've heard people say it, Christians are just so judgmental. I actually heard, I've heard a few people over my over years say, you know, the problem with Christians is they're so judgmental. Now, for that person to say that, that means they've come across Christians who are high and mighty. I've heard it more, I've heard it more than once. Christians are so judgmental. That means they've come across Christians who are not being humble. They're attacking them, saying what they need to be doing. Instead of understanding the struggle, they attack them. If you're, again, before I close, if you attack someone in sin, they run away from you. Don't attack. Don't attack. Be humble and pray for them. Amen. Uh, Jonna, if I, uh, if I don't check myself, the Holy Spirit would definitely check me <laughs> as you're speaking. Amen, Jonna. If I don't humble myself, the Holy Spirit would definitely check me as I'm speaking. Amen. That's right. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit will give you a self check. Either you check yourself or the Holy Spirit will check you like he did me in church. He got me in church. I told you the Holy Spirit convicted me in church. Turn my life around. Talk about good God. Turn your life around. He turned my life around that day. He took the <laughs> he took the anger away. He turned all my anger away. He turned my rage away. <laughs> God is a good God. He turned your anger away. He turned your guilt away. He turned your rage away. He turned everything not supposed to be in you. He turned everything around. We sang that earlier. He turned everything around. Anger, rage, unforgiveness, guilt, negativity, all that stuff. God will turn everything around. And that's why we sing it every day. That's why we sing it every day now. God is a good God. He'll turn your life around. God is a good God. He'll turn everything around. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, <laughs> amen, Deanne. Uh, uh, if you're not careful, you can bite your tongue and get tongue tied. <laughs> Amen, Deanne. You start, you start being judgmental. Hey, you need to be. <laughs> you try to judge somebody. All of a sudden, it sounds like you're speaking in tongues. You know what you need to. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit put a, a spoon in your mouth. You try to judge. You need to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good visual. That's a good visual. You try to ball somebody out what they need to be doing, and the Holy Spirit put a, a, a bag of marbles in your mouth. And you can you feel like you start sound like you talking in tongues. <laughs> oh, let me shut up. Oh, praise God. Oh. Shame the devil. Shame the devil to tell the truth. <laughs> shame the devil to tell the truth. Get you. Get your stutter. Get you get a stutter you don't understand. Hey, <laughs> <Amen>, John. 
<laughs> oh, praise God. Laughter, laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good for the soul, especially when it's healing. Laughter is good for the soul, especially when it's healing laughter. We laugh about things, and this is real. We laughing, but this is real. This is real. The Holy Spirit will check you. The Holy Spirit will check you like he did me. I told you my I told you my story. So don't don't get it twisted. The Holy Spirit will check you if you don't check yourself. He'll make sure he'll check you. And then all of a sudden you look really funny. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. <clears throat> We thank you for this lesson about not being judgmental, Lord. Even though we have a good time, Lord, we understand the seriousness of this, Lord. Even though we have joy in our heart right now, Lord, we understand the seriousness of this topic, Lord. To not be judgmental, Lord, because we understand that being judgmental can lose a soul. And we don't want to, we don't want to be chasing people away, Lord. So, Lord, help us to be able to check ourselves to not be judgmental and not lose a soul that could be saved, Lord. Bless us every time we're in a situation, Lord. Whatever judgmentalism may come into play, Lord, help us to recognize being judgmental. Help us to be able to adjust our words, Lord, and not be judgmental, but to be able to adjust the words, to be humble, and be able to reach the person who we need to minister to, who we need to speak to, to get them back on track, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord, to find the right words at the right time, to wait for you, Lord, and the Holy Spirit, to speak through us, to tell us exactly what to say and how to say it, Lord, so it would never lose anyone who could be coming to the kingdom amen in jesus name <clears throat> praise god amen family amen praise god before we close before we close this beautiful day in this lesson i know someone's listening for the first time or maybe learning for the first time about being judgmental and hopefully this lesson is a blessing to everyone to understand how easy it is to slip into judgmentalism so we we don't want to make sure we don't recognize it. We do we'll make sure we do recognize it. So we're able to adjust our words. Amen. So right now I'm going to talk to a person. Right now, someone's listening who doesn't understand our fellowship and our fire and our fellowship and our love and our praise. Someone's watching right now who's been dealing with this very topic. And they don't have the love we have. They don't have the praise we have or the fellowship. So right now, I'm going into the closing prayers and the prayer of salvation. As always, please no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted. I respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> right now, I'm talking to the person listening. And you've been here the whole time. You heard the praise, the worship, and the sermon. But right now, you can't connect. Because right now your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Family is turning away from you. Friends stab you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel. Have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally. That's why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil tells you once you leave God or fail God, you would never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and fell back into sin, there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. 
commit, commit your life to Christ and there's nothing the devil could do to stop you. So whether you're walking right now as a backslider, you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression and darkness and hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Either way, I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I commit right now I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove me anything and everything that's not like you in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us. We are not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve it out every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named or unnamed, seen or unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of a mind, out of a spirit, out of a home, out of a kids, out of a marriages, back to the pit of hell for which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please give me hedge protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, Lord, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we be healed, and we confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus every day. Confess it and thank Him. Confess it and thank Him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P U. S H pray until something happens. Loose supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord, rain down on fellowships, every financial need, whatever it is. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory. Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything. The Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of these are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know. Now we know, Lord, 
every day. Take time to see it. Visualize the miracle every day. See it, believe it, and receive it in your heart. And as you receive it in your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day, could be the day and the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face of divine approval upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray over. A blessing to everyone you pass by and bless. And I open your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24 7, 365, including leap year. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. And the fellowship say, Amen, Amen, Amen. <laughs>